Hello everyone, Palletub here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Our party, led by the world's strongest and smartest Githyanki, Kalark Olark, finds themselves pausing on the road to the west. We are getting ready to leave Act 2 behind. But as we were approaching the path that the Absolute's army took to leave this area, the little trinket that Kithric Voss gave us, Vlacketh's former follower, let us know that her army, Vlacketh's army, is here. And they want to stop us. They want the artifact back. It was just a little, hey, just a little wiggle of the artifact was all we needed to know. Now, I've actually been looking forward to Act 3 for quite some time. As a lot of you know, I made a spreadsheet to at least plan out Kalark's build and his progress along his path. There's a lot of really good things awaiting us in Act 3, and I hope you guys are excited to see it too. Remember, if you are enjoying the content, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It helps us out a ton and just takes you a very quick second. I'm just trying to inch forward. I know it's here somewhere. Where is it? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have two Githyanki on the low ground with big swords, uh, two on the high ground with crossbows, and then in the middle, we have the Avatar of Vlacketh. Ra'i Tuskaan. I don't know if I said that right. I probably did not. Lazel on the low ground, and Kalark are both up on their first turn. Maybe we take down some of the ants here, or we could just book it straight upstairs to do some damage. I actually like both ideas. Uh, Astarian was still back here playing his music, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move him up. Unfortunately, Kalark is very, very close to the battle at hand. Oh, I was gonna do a hypnotic pattern. Uh, I didn't think... Yeah, surprised he's in combat. They don't have sight lines, sight lines of that. Uh, that happened early, that's okay. I was gonna sneak, but not the end of the world. Uh, we could potentially put a darkness up top to maybe stop these guys. I think a command would be really funny. Hey, could you drop your weapon up there? <laughs> it was worth a try. It was worth a try. All right, Kalark is going to toppling attack the veteran warrior on the left. He is going to toppling attack the veteran warrior on the right. Both of them get knocked to the ground and then Kalark is going to take his fist and plunge it directly into the teeth of the warrior who just died on the right-hand side. Uh, Clark moves over the body on the left and ends his turn. The archer's up on the high ground. Try to use a trip attack on Gale. He's gonna try to charm the attacker, but unfortunately does get knocked to the ground. Funny enough, making those follow-up shots harder to hit, but they hit anyway. Now they're using some battle tactics to give some rallied HP to the warrior that's knocked down on the ground. Kalark's going to try to grab one of those missiles out of the air and return it to Sender, successfully dealing 19 damage there with that arrow going back. That same archer rallying his friend on the high ground, but the avatar of Vlacketh takes the form of Dread and fires off a, what were you concentrating on? There's probably a recast of uh, of Hex or something. Uh, we're gonna do an elemental warp up to the high ground if I can with our big old hulking elemental. He is a little difficult to get into position sometimes, but there we go. And now that he's here, let's do a multi-attack on the raider in front of us. Now, these Githyanki that have the large silver swords, they actually gain some passive benefits throughout each turn of combat. Uh, where they can parry incoming damage, but the crossbow guys up here are never gonna have that. As we overlook the battlefield, I think Gale is just going to... You know what, that doesn't look horrible. I kind of hate that my pet's up there, but maybe we could sneak in a fireball. It says I don't have enough movement to connect with this, unfortunately. So if I don't have enough movement, let's just upcast one of our favorite spells, Magic Missile. We're gonna aim it towards the weakest of the archers up top and see how it does. Pretty good damage, only two HP remaining on that target. Gale's gonna move off to the side just a little bit. As the melee combatant finally stands up, see who's been beating him <laughs> senseless, and jumps over towards the wizard to try to dodge him. We attempt an extinctive charm, and it worked! Gale will not be hit this turn, at least not by that guy. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute, who do I even go after now? 
Uh, let us advance a little bit more with Starion. I really would like to do a Crown of Madness up onto the high ground if I can. Unfortunately, he is so very far away that I don't think that's really going to be possible. So instead, what we'll do is just a vicious mockery on the warrior closest to our party. Unfortunately, he resists that insult. Uh, Lazelle cannot advance forward because she's frightened, so she is simply going to cast a Hex onto the warrior in front of us and then hit him with a nice Eldritch Blast to deal some damage. Perfect. Removing that Rally Shield that he got. Uh, then Kalark moves forward with another toppling blow, bringing the warrior down to the ground and a swift punch to take them out. Uh, I think I could probably jump up to the high ground this turn. What I'm going to do instead is just stand under the bridge. That way they don't have a line of sight of me and they won't be able to attack me. Unfortunately, that means Gale is now target number one. That first shot bringing him down to his feet and then a ricocheting arrow bounces between the remainder of my party. The veteran's up on the high ground now. Only two HP on this archer. What's he going to do with it? Another ricocheting arrow shot onto the Earth Elemental. That was actually a really smart play. He loved it so much that he did it again. And they managed to take down Gale with all of these ricochets. Oh my god. We do see an Eldritch Blast being cast on the left side now as the Avatar of Vlacketh moves to a more secure location. A single swing should be all it takes to take down the one remaining, or I guess there's two up there, but now there's only one remaining archer. Uh, I, I really like the idea of Crown of Madness again, but I kind of think we need to control this person a little bit more. So we're going to do a Glyph of Warding with the Sleep applied to it. Beautiful. That avatar is not going to be bothering me anytime soon. Uh, we see Lazel move up and help up Gale. Kalark on his turn is going to leap up to the high ground if he can. Might need to use tactical cam. Might need to just move first so I could see the bridge. That looks like it's the play. Unfortunately, it's saying my path is interrupted. I knew I'd be able to find a way. Thank you very much. The archer up on the bridge is pretty weak at this point. How much movement do... That's not where it said I was going to jump. I know that for a fact. So I got to jump this way. And then... Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I don't think I'm meant to be up here. All right. Uh, I could shadow step out, but I don't have any actions remaining. All of my bonus actions have been used up. If I sprint... That would be my main action, and then I technically get another chance to... No, I don't have any bonus action. Oh, you just walked over it. Thank you so much, Kalark. What a great turn. Feel really good about that. Cutting words to try to mitigate some of this damage that's incoming. Gale gets hit with another ricocheting arrow. How many of these arrows do you have left? A misty step now bringing the archer closer to our party to get a better shot of uh, Astarian over on the side. Well, we are going to chase him with the elemental because, of course, the elemental could just reappear wherever they would like with a bonus action. A multi-attack into the back of the archer, not enough to kill him, but does get through that rallied HP. Now, Starion on the low ground is going to... I could Vicious Mockery. 65% chance to connect. It does! Hideous Laughter makes that person unable to attack. Well, your days are numbered now, friend. Uh, we could potentially go off to the left to help Kalark, but I don't think he needs it. Three key points remaining. He's going to start to unload into his target. I don't think we need to do a toppling attack. Let me just hit first. That'll wake her up. Now we do a toppling attack. Cutting words. Helps it topple. We punch again with advantage now. And you know what? Let's just do a staggering blow. Not enough damage to kill off the target, but we got a pretty good amount of the way. Uh, we could put Hex up there, I suppose. Uh, I could wake up Gale. He should be safe now, actually. Let's wake up Gale. He won't be ricocheted anytime soon. Lazel's going to move a little bit closer. With any luck, I'll be able to jump up there next turn. Uh, the Avatar of Lakith does finally stand up, tries a vampiric touch on Kalark, but it misses. The follow-up attack on Kalark misses 
as well. Gale is simply going to move underneath the building that the archer is on to try to find some cover. He's gone down too many times. We're then going to see a multi-attack from the elemental. The reason we're doing this is we've already passed the turn of this guy. I kind of thought there was going to be a check on the hideous laughter, though. He just kept on trucking. All right. Uh, we are going to see Astarian move forward and Vicious Mockery. He insulted the avatar of Blacketh. Uh, we're then going to fire off a shot with our secondary hand crossbow and then line of sight just a little bit. Lazel attempts to jump up top. It doesn't look like that's possible from here. What about from here, Lazel? Could you do that for me? Oh, sadness, sadness. Hideous Laughter is seriously nine more turns. He must do a check on his turn. I thought it was every time he took damage, too. Like it would snap him out of the joke. Uh, I suppose with the rest of my turn, we'll just start to sprint. That's the only way I'm going to get that close. That pathing looks really weird to me. It looks like I could have made that jump, but this the game says I can't. The game says I can't. We punched the avatar of Lacketh in the side of the head and loved it so much, we decided to do it again. Does she have anything on her... Oh, many things on her body. Wow, okay. We're going to end these turns and listen to the calming laughter of this man here. Uh, Gale moves out and casts a level five magic missile. He's a little upset. The psionic detector alerted us to the Githyanki attack. Looks like Voss was good for his word. Hey, Kalark coming to the same conclusion that we did at the start of this video. We find a Githyanki longsword. That's nothing too crazy. This psionic ward armor, though, seems like it's the same as the Githyanki half plate. But with some added healing effects. Oh, you can cast Mage Hand as a bonus action and gain access to telekinesis. That thing is awesome. We have some royal orders, though, that Kalark is going to take a look at. Do what has been asked of you. Stop the interlopers. Take back what's mine, else your punishment will be severe. By orders of your queen, Vlacketh. I mean, we probably should have seen this coming at one point, but now we are public enemy number one for our former leader. Lazelle looks like she has something she'd like to say about that fact. It is as we knew. Our people have turned their blades against us. They will emerge from the shadows and descend from the skies, and we will grant them their only just fate. Death. Yes! Lazelle's on board. <laughs> and with Vlacus' ambush quickly dealt with, there's nothing stopping our party from continuing forward now, moving ever closer to Baldur's Gate itself. Is Kalark and company strong enough to defeat the trials that lie ahead of them? Well, there's only one way to find out. However, the city's a little bit further away than you might expect. The curse has been lifted. The land's cleansed of the shadows. Cethric's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this, at least, you have triumphed. That's so beautiful. You gotta feel good about that, right, Kalark? Oh, he actually does take some time to appreciate it. That's really cool. We did that. We made the build the, the world a little better today. I imagine that's what he's thinking. I don't think I could stand still long enough to have a picture done of me. There's no way. Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Worm's Rock is secure, and preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. 
The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the flaming fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Oh, he was working on that. The plan is falling <laughs> apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Ketherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. I itch to peel you. To split your skin. To see your skull shine in the light. Little tyrant. <sighs> Lucky for you, I harvested a whole family of living flesh in Rivington at High Sun. They will sate my blade thirst tonight. Oh, but tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, my blades will thirst again. Hmm, I wonder what that was about. Hmm, just my imagination running wild a little bit. Hey, that's actually cool. They're appreciating Saluna's moon together. I actually love that. Always nice to have an angel in your back pocket, right? I mean... Astarian, we could just firebolt that and get that started, bud. You don't need to spend any time on that. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away. Worms look out. Beneath us lies the city of Rivington the town that's worm rock castle right there and then what you see way off to the northwest is baldur's gate city proper i thought it was funny my first time through here i was so confused by that i actually changed my mind on what i was seeing while i was editing and editor walter was wrong that day <laughs> well kalark descends from his lookout tower and makes his way towards the center of the camp We'll see what everyone else is up to. Looks like Astarian has a little something he wants to say. This should be a great time to check in with him. The gate is closed. As is Casador. Casador and his right of profane ascension. An imperial soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master and elevate him to an unfathomable station to place him in a position of such esteem. The world will yearn to kneel and offer their necks. Um, do you envy him? Because it sounded like you were a little jealous there. Of course I envy him. Why wouldn't I? The problem with what Cazador has done is that he did it to me. If the time comes and I can stay one move ahead of him, I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. We recently got a very mean comment. Well, it wasn't very mean. You weren't mean at all. But a comment saying that we didn't do what Astarian thought, what you thought Astarian would do during the co-op playthrough. But it sounds like Astarian's ready to go. If he can take over for Casador, he wants to do it. Well, if we could pull it off, 
We, we don't know anything about the ritual. Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Cazador's front door. Uh, what a great idea. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more and be finely positioned for yours truly to ascend. <laughs> All right, bud. All right. Well, the information will be useful. We'll find the other spawn for you. If we don't find my brethren, they'll find us. Likely with bared fangs. So keep that in the back of your mind. First. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Unless Cazador's change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town seeking prey. Yeah, it won't be good. We'll keep that in the back of our mind. We'll try to pick up the trail of Cazador's scent as we progress Let's through the city. On my way. We'll have entire episodes dedicated to this. Don't you worry. It's one of the things I'm most optimistic about heading back into Baldur's Gate. I know how to complete some of the quests. I felt as though a lot of what we were doing was just uh, disjointed before. Didn't realize that Lazel had a Mind Flayer head in here. Curious. I drained you dry. Yet your body seems no more worse for wear. Perhaps I might find use for it again. Yes! Drained me dry! Wow! Woo! Hey, Lazo, can I have another smooch? I'd like the same. Yeah! Kalark! Oh my god, we actually kissed that time. It wasn't like a screen away. Thanks, Lazo. Bye. <sighs> See ya. Let's go to sleep, dude. Let's go to the city. That's gonna be excellent. The events of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of mind flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the astral prison and the mysterious visitor inside of it. That's true. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the dead three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. Will it you will break beneath my fists. And their religious delusions. Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? I will free everyone from this evil. I will be the one to cleanse this plane of the Absolute. It is my destiny. You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. Hear me. Gather. The reckoning is upon us. The city thirsts for domination. March. Join. Immediately as this is happening, a portal with Githyanki open up. Uh, who are these guys? The High Gishra Giklir. Well, three of them lie in the path ahead. Lazel's the first up in the turn order. She's going to cast a Hex onto the first of the combatants. Escape the portal before the absolute takes control. We only have three turns to get to where we're going. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we got a long rest. I'm not able to use my shadow step just yet. That damage a little lackluster, but Lazel is going to move up to defend our party. Meanwhile, a dash happening from one of the Githyanki above us as they rush towards my main party. An attack of opportunity as he walks. Ooh. Oh my god! Oh my god! Lace out! <laughs> oh my god, they're monks! Holy shit! Well, that one was a monk. Right now, he's a burning pile of ash on the ground. I need your help. I need your help. I believe that was our guardian from the prism calling us. Well, Astarian is going to attempt to move up yet again with his 
Sleep Glyph of Warding. If I can make it up to the top, it looks like that will work. Just behind Lazel here, I'm gonna try it. They saved the check. That sucks. Uh, that is all I could do on my turn, unfortunately. But Kalak Olak sees how dire this situation is. He's going to do two bonus actions of Cunning Dash and a dashing main action. He can run to the moon and back right now. I'm hoping... Wait, that's really all I could move? Oh, shit! Kalark, stop! Oh, no! <laughs> this is a new day! Uh, Kalark, because it's a new day, hasn't drank his potion, so he is totally weighed down by everything that he's carrying. Uh, giant... Strength Elixir takes an action to use. So this is Kalark's movement while over encumbered. <laughs> I'll get there. Oh, don't you worry. I'm almost there. Don't hit me. <laughs> All right, back to it. <laughs> That's so funny. Dash coming forward from one of the other monks here. They land a critical hit on Kalark for 20 damage. Gale then decides that he is going to cast a fire bolt on the closest target to him. Completely missing, unfortunately. But then he is going to misty step up to the high ground above and walk towards the astral portal. Does that break my entire party through? Yes, it does. Good job, Gale. That orb's going to blow, and soon. More Githyanki. Oh, look at those tattoos. Wait a minute, hold on. How do I get a tattoo? <laughs> Kalark was even like looking at his arms. <laughs> Whoa! Shattered it! The whole thing comes crashing down. I'm here. Okay, we're gonna turn on turn-based mode really fast. Kalark is going to drink one of those mini elixirs that he has in his bag, and he's feeling like he's up to full strength now. We cannot short rest. Can we short rest song? We sure can. And are the Githyanki enemies here? I can't quite tell yet. Everyone's gonna jump across. It does appear as though the Intellect devourers are on our side in this fight, but that doesn't make any sense. Why would Kalark ever side with an intellect devourer? Kalark's gonna jump in, hopefully have a decent turn in the turn order. Uh, we are going to see a, once again, that's not a once again. What was that? What did I just pick? That's a thunder, 5d8 thunder. Let's upcast that to a level six. We'll just place it right here on top of everybody. Uh, several of the intellect devourers do go down, but the monks themselves still have a problem with us. Uh, Gale's going to move up just a little bit and cast a fireball onto the entire group. Level three, nothing too crazy. It's a dexterity save, so monks have a very high chance of avoiding the full damage there. It looks like it's only the two monks remaining now. Uh, Lazel is going to jump in using the lack of the lessened gravity from the prism that we are residing in. And because it's a new day, she can't attack twice. She needs to rebind her weapon. How fun. Kalark on his turn. Confusedly punches the monk next to him. Like, I thought we were good, guys. What's, what's going on? I need to make sure I don't send any of them flying. I was actually going to push this guy off into the into nothing, but it's very important that I loot here because there's a pair of boots that is phenomenal for Monk that you can only get during this transition in between Act 2 and Act 3. So we need to make very sure that we are paying attention and looting 
everything. None of the bodies here seem to have what I was looking for. The Guardian is calling for aid up ahead. Kalark hears it and begins jumping as far as he possibly can, trying to reach his Guardian. A massive fireball up ahead as the silhouette of a Mind Flayer starts to become more clear. And Agath Yanki, bound in chains, protected by an orb, is at the end of the walkway. An intellect devourer walks by my feet as the Mind Flayer throws a gigantic rock at one of the Gith Yanki. What is going on? Oh, that was a solid punch. I like that. I like that punch. Oh, and what a dodge, too. They've been trained well. Solid hit as well. Great hit. Can that be? Is that the Comet Prince? Was that a misty step? Before you do anything, I am your ally. No. We are in danger. No. Tentacled freak. What in the hell is this? I agree. The Yankee is the source of our protection against the Absolute. I must subdue him or everything we've worked towards is lost. Don't let my form deceive you. I am the one that's been protecting you. I am the one that came to you in your dreams. Help me. You've been lying to me. Oh. Um, um, I don't believe you! You're a Mind Flayer! There is no reality that a Githyanki would let a Mind Flayer live and help him. They're just, that's not a thing. We're sworn arch enemies. Also, the fact that if you have been manipulating me this entire time, that kind of makes it worse. I don't believe you. I am the reason you are free. We are more alike than you want to admit. Look past it. I know you don't want to, but you must. Now, help me. I must? What? What? Perhaps I help him now to understand the situ- Detect thoughts. All of it. Give me the good shit. I'm going to use my- Divine intellect that has been bestowed upon me. Show me your thoughts. Despite your best attempts to be subtle, the Mind Flayer's awareness is everywhere. You blunder in its presence like a warg pup learning to walk. You must be joking. I am telling you my thoughts directly into your head. But... If you insist on taking a look for yourself, be my guest. Nothing in your colorful existence to date could have prepared you for this. As the horror subsides, you are left with only one coherent thought. You must do whatever you can to subdue the Githyanki. Very well. Happy? Now, join me. Fight. You've convinced me for now, but this is not over. All together, we can turn the tide. I didn't even see what the Githyanki option was. No! Uh, Lazel, very far away, begins to leap forward. She doesn't like this plan either, but she trusts Kalark, at least for the time being. The Githyanki up ahead of us are fighting. The intellect devourers on the ground. Cutting war. I don't think we try to protect these. In fact, I think the sooner they, they die, the better. Although they are getting key resonation on them. I don't know if Kalark can do that yet or if that's going to be a level nine thing, but it's basically exploding palm. It's really, really cool. These intellect devourers do not stand a chance. We see our, my camera keeps jumping back to Lazel for absolutely no reason, even though a scorching ray was being cast up here. Now the Githyanki approach the Illithid. 
It does say that he's a rogue mind flayer for what it's worth. We're gonna try to charm the monk that was going after Gale, stopping him in his tracks. He then turns his attention over to Kalark and misses that attack thanks to the cutting words of my dear bard friend. Let me show you how that's done, boy. A toppling attack doesn't send him to the ground, but the follow-up swings certainly do leave an impression in his skin as he falls to the ground. There's one more Githyanki across from us and several throughout the room. Astarian is going to try to do a hypnotizing pattern in front of them. It does work on the low ground one, but does not affect the higher up Githyanki. Destroy the honor guard. Is this Flacketh's honor guard? Because that's okay. He just dominated that Githyanki, though. That's a little less okay. I don't feel super good about that. Uh, we are going to see Gale cast a level four Scorching Ray up to the high ground, 50% chance to hit. But if it does, he'll feel that. Oh yeah, half health. Cutting words to make him topple as well. Uh, Gale is going to move back with the remainder of his turn. Lazel still trying to enter the fight properly. I don't know why she didn't get brought up with the rest of my party that was teleported forward. That's a little unfortunate. Is going to dash as well as leap. Uh, I was hoping I could get up here with all that movement, but no, that doesn't even look like it's the case still. Well, she's going to enter the room as far as she can nonetheless and end her turn. The domination has already ended on one of the monks in the center of the room. Uh, we see her approach R. Kalark, but no damage being done. Uh, the knocked down Githyanki on the high ground stands up again and casts a fireball on the entirety of my party. I did not see that coming. He then jumps down to the low ground and is standing next to our fireballer. Well, we're going to move in with a toppling blow to our friend's side. That will be enough to kill him. We then turn around and do another toppling blow on the prelate in front of us. We follow that up with a swing followed by another swing but she's not quite dead yet. Astarian is going to bite the neck of the Githyanki that is currently knocked down on the ground. Thank you. He's happy now. We got to keep him happy. Uh, with the rest of his turn, he will shoot down with his hand crossbow and then move back up to the top. Uh, we are going to watch as the... Emperor. Okay, we do know his name is the Emperor. Okay, we watch as the Emperor moves forward and dominates another of the Githyanki mines up ahead. Uh, we could potentially see about Dimension Dooring up there, but I don't think that's necessary either. We're going to do a very easy auto attack with Gale for five damage and then back up. There's no attack of opportunity. Lazelle is going to not bind her pack weapon because she can't do that now and instead moves forward to deal a big swing of damage. The monk stands back up and tries to do a resonating key attack, but it misses on Kalark. And she tries again. It misses on Kalark. She tries again. It does actually connect this time. So we are going to explode, dealing force damage to our entire party. No one makes Kalak explode except no one. <laughs> and I go ahead and deal some damage. Uh, we will try to get in range with Astarian to hit the high ground. It's slightly out of range still, I think. And to be honest, it's kind of risky shooting that many projectiles at, at a monk. Maybe I shouldn't do that. We are going to Misty Step up to the high ground though and begin punching the lights out of this target. We're going to do a pushing flurry of blows to knock them back down to the high ground. And I was hoping the fall damage would be enough to finish them off, but they still got a little bit left. Chain lightning. Wait, who are you trying to chain to, bud? And he just took his lights out again. No, 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 no. What's going on here? Don't look at me like that. I am a Mind Flayer, yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the Absolute. Is that so? It's obscene to owe my life to a damned gay. I agree, it's vile! Lies, no more tricks. I will have answers. Um. I wish I could just let Lazelle continue to like just yell at this guy. 
tell me everything? Uh, you were in the prison the whole time? Why did you deceive Kalark? It was necessary. Rare are those that would openly consider a partnership with a Mind Flayer. Even those who are on a path of becoming one. It's like I said before, I'm just like you. An adventurer, I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure, to a colony of Mind Flayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. It's just like what happened to us. For years, I served the Elder Brain, the one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them, rarely missed. And they fueled me while I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stillmane. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield, the largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence, though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. And he just he walked in there with a steel watch. And brought me back to the brain, where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight, to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. That gets Yankee in the sphere. Be honest with me, who is it? Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. Orpheus? Impossible. He was slain by Shastil Kithrak himself. Quite possible, I assure you. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled his mother, Gith, to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' mother left, a usurper took her place. Vlacketh declared herself queen of your people. Vlacketh wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. He's the rightful Bound heir! Infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. Was it you or Orpheus that Queen Vlacketh wanted me to kill earlier? Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some of your people still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blackith was safe as long as you believed him dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. I don't understand. The histories claim the prince was burned to ash in the skies. Your histories are fabrications. The prince was not killed. As you can very well see, he was imprisoned. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the rest of your people ever find out what she's done, there will be civil war. Your queen will be finished. Which is exactly what 
I want. How did Gortash and the others find out about the Astral Prism? A very good question. One that I have been unable to answer. That Orpheus lives at all is ruinous to Black Kith. She has done everything in her power to keep his existence a secret. That Gortash and the Chosen found out about it. This is impossible to explain. But it was important enough to them that Gortash sent me to retrieve it. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside. And found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. And what would happen, hypothetically, of course, if I were to free Orpheus? That would be a terrible idea. Would it? The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, you would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. How's that possible? You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid. A sworn enemy, just like me. I am no illithid, and if I have my way, I will never be. You are already more illithid than you realize. It has improved you. You seek to reverse an inevitable process. A process of evolution. When I first escaped from the Elder Brain, I too railed against the change. But the longer I have inhabited this form, the more it has grown on me. Even if my original body remained intact after I transformed, I would not return to it. Doing so would only impose limitations. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. Absolutely not! No! I do not! I'm trying to avoid becoming a Mind Flayer! I thought you agreed to protect me, you fuck! Why are you changing now? I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent Lithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. No fucking way. I understand. Let us hope then that your present self will be sufficient to deal with three gods of death and a giant magically enhanced elder brain. But in case you change your mind... Bro, if I could rip off one of his tentacles right now, I would do it. This puts me in a very difficult spot. This this worm's never coming close to my brain. A starion, on the other hand, might like Look it. Look after it. Use it when you're ready to evolve. You or your allies. It has vitality enough for you all. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. And with that, our party is free to leave. Now, let's not forget what I said earlier. One of these Githyanki have a very, very important item for Kalark. Who is it? There they are, the boots of uninhibited Kushugo. The wearer deals additional damage equal to their wisdom modifier. 
for unarmed strikes. I didn't get the boots I wanted in Act 2. I have been eagerly anticipating finally getting these. We are going to equip these onto Kalark. Now, we have a decent wisdom modifier of 18. If we wanted to change it, we could on, I think, next one or two level ups, we'll get another feat if we wanted to do that. Maybe three level ups, we'll get another feat if we wanted to do that. But this means that the plus four I get from my wisdom is added to my damage, which is awesome. There's a lot to think about as we conclude today's video. Is it true that if I let Orpheus out, he would see me as just another Illithid? Is it true that if I were to attack the Mind Flayer right now and end his tyranny, I don't know anything about him, but he's a Mind Flayer, so he's gotta have tyranny. Would I immediately then be turned by the Absolute? There's a lot of unknowns, so we must venture forward. Thank you guys so much for being here. We will return to the Mortal Plane in the next episode.